Welcome to all of you on that side and on that side and in the middle to a cosmic love story as presented by the musical backdrop of Tierra Lee, Bridget Law, and the voice of Barbara Marks Hubbard. Give it up. Wow. Greetings, everybody. We're on a fabulous journey. And the reason we have this behind us is that Mark Gaffney is in Holland and he will be coming in live at the right moment we imagine. So his camera is there and when I'm looking there he can see me and you're going to be able to see him. So this is rather complex but when you think of what is a cosmic love story it is the most fabulous journey that humanity is on. If you can see it as universal desire for more life, more love, more creativity, and more humanity, you will see it's a journey. And I'm so thrilled to be with my partner, Bridget, who is such a joy to be a violin while I'm speaking and we're in dialogue and to have Tiero, her beloved and the beautiful organizer of this entire Sunrise Ranch as well as being with us. We're so happy to have you, Tiero. So delightful. Thank you. <laughs> Sunrise Ranch at a crisis of the birth of the next stage of evolution. It's very hard to recognize that because we don't remember 
what it took the universe to do to get us here. So the crisis of birth, where we could go into devolution and destruction right in our lifetime. But at the very same time, if you take that trajectory of what, ha it, what ha has taken to get us here, and we realize we're aware now that we could either devolve or through our own love, creativity, connectivity, and purpose, we can take a new step as great as the step from nothing to something to cells to multi cells to you and me now and so we are here at the exact moment of the crisis of the birth of the next stage of evolution but the problem is we don't know our story it wasn't until the 1960s that some astronauts, some, uh, some radio astronomers found the background radiation of the Big Bang. Einstein thought it was an eternal universe. They didn't know. We're the only generation on Earth that knows how long it took to get here and that we're part of this story. So we're going to be telling here the new story of the crisis of birth of a new species. And we're calling this species, if you all like this name, just really let it sink in. We're calling ourselves Homo Amore Universalis. <laughs> Homo Amore Universalis. We just really, through my partner Mark Gaffney and I, came up with this name. He was Homo Amore, and I was Homo Universalis. <laughs> so we thought, what if we put those two together? So I want to tell you just briefly, how did this happen to me? I was, you know, a nice young lady born in New York City in 1929, and I thought everything was great, actually. I had no idea until the United States dropped the first bomb on Japan. And I was surrounded by people who knew all the generals of the Second World War. They all thought it was great. And I said to everyone, what do you think is the meaning of this power that's good? Where could we possibly be going with this power that's good. And I, I even got to President Eisenhower. I got into the Oval Office and I said, Mr. President, I have a question for you. He's the most powerful man in the whole world right then, 1953. What do you think is the meaning of all this power that's good? Military, industrial, technological power. And he looked at me, he said, young lady, I have no idea. So I thought, that we better find out. And I went on a search to see not only how we got here, but where we're going, and how come the human species has the power to destroy its entire civilization or create something new. Now we're at the Arise Festival doing this. Now the Arise Festival has the clue. The clue is people are arising. The clue is we love each other. The clue is we have some place that we want to go. But of course, I didn't know that. And it's a privilege to be here doing this at Arise, I must say, with Bridget and, and Tiero and Mark in Holland. So I got depressed after meeting President Eisenhower. Because I had, we didn't know, nobody knew. I tried the church, the meaning of the new power. They didn't know. I tried the Bryn Mawr College. They didn't know. So then I thought, well, I think we better find out. And I'll tell you the clues, because this is the clue that might have gotten you to realize that we're on a threshold of the greatest possibilities. And here's the first thing that helped, happened to me out of this depression. I was about 30 years old, and I picked up a book by Abraham Maslow called Toward a Psychology of Being. Does anybody know that book? He's the one who first studied wellness. He was a psychiatrist. And everybody had studied 
illness. <laughs> Nobody said, what is a well person? And how did they ever get to be that way? And so I read that book and I wondered, because I was depressed too. So <laughs> I, I read the book and here's what he discovered. The clue to what he calls self-actualizing humans that were fulfilled and joyful and useful in the world, first time studied through a psychiatry point of view, he found every single one of them had chosen work, life purpose, that they found intrinsically self-rewarding and of service. Is there anybody here who feels you have felt, found chosen work intrinsically self-rewarding? Look at this. This is the Arise Music Festival. <laughs> In most places, you would find that people, many people didn't, haven't done that yet. Bridget, chosen work you find intrinsically self-rewarding? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yes. Then, second thing as to how we could be going somewhere was this great Catholic Jesuit paleontologist, Teilhard de Chardin. Anybody ever heard of Teilhard de Chardin? One, two, three, four, five. Great, great uh, Jesuit paleontologist, never published by the church. Here's what he found out. He studied evolution and he found it had a sense of direction. Because when you look at from single cell to multi cell to animal to human to us, the direction of evolution is three things he found. Number one, increase of consciousness. Do we have more consciousness than a single cell? Awesomely more consciousness, because we're 52 trillion cells making us up. So the first thing is he found direction of consciousness. Second thing he found, his direction was freedom. Single cell to multi cell to animal to human to us, how much freedom of action, of behavior, of, of, of destroying or creating do we have than a single cell? It's huge. It's freedom. And the third one was love. And he called it com complexity, that particles are attracted to particles from quarks all the way on up. We have 52 trillion cells attracted within us to each other, creating these eyes, these ears, these hands, this music. The music of the single cells attracted to each other. Wow. Woo. Let's see what that would be like. Woo. <laughs> about the story of creation and how it got us here. So the single cell, the more complex order, and here was the huge discovery. I discovered I have the same purpose as the 13.7 billion years of evolution. <gasps> like, I would like more consciousness. Is there anybody here who would like a little more consciousness? Everybody. Well, your evolution is on your side. How many here enjoy freedom and would like even a little more. Everybody. And who enjoys love, complexity, and joining together? How many of us? Okay. Triumph inside ourselves instead of feeling helpless and hopeless and going nowhere. I realized I am evolution. <laughs> you are evolution. <laughs> Would anybody like to say out loud, I am evolution? How does it feel? Wonderful. It feels what? I evol... Let's have a theme for I am evolution. Wow. 
It's rising. I am consciousness. I am freedom. I am love. I am going there further and further every day. Yes? That's the beginning of the cosmic love story is to know that. Now, what happens if you know that? Oh, I'm seeing all these themes. We could have an entire musical on this. Here's the next theme. Vocational arousal. <laughs> Art, do you have a passion inside you for more consciousness, more freedom, and more love? That's known as vocational arousal. <laughs> the entire audience is vocationally aroused. That's the truth. And the Arise Music Festival, I said this to Paul Bassus, if we ever had the, the arousal of this entire group, of thousands of people here, it would be an evolutionary signal to the universe. Yes? Now we can start. <laughs> we can start right here on that. So now I have another fabulous word for a theme from my two beloved musicians. When you get vocational arousal, you know what you feel? Supra sex. <laughs> and what is supra sex? As in sexuality, we join genes to have the baby. In suprasexuality, we join genius. Wow. Feel the genius inside yourself, in part of that evolutionary consciousness, freedom, and more complex order, as activating your genius to join in love, to create that nobody else on earth could create but you. Wow, is that a good plan? Wow. And you know what happens to you when, that, when you turn on with Supra Sex? You become telerotic. Now, that's another word I made up. Another theme is required here. Telos is purpose and Eros is juicy love. <laughs> I'm are you telerotic? Is there anybody telerotic here? <laughs> okay. I'm telerotic. The minute I found out that the direction of evolution was inside me, and that I said yes, did, did, has anybody here said a big yes to the impulse in you? Yes! <laughs> because... Yes, let's hear the yes music. Woo! <laughs> wow, there we go. There's our yes. Let's say it with a yes. 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 Hi, Mark. <laughs> yes. And when you say yes to your vocation and you light your life purpose, you know what happens? You awaken your deepest heart's desire. Wow. Most of us don't quite know what it is because we don't ask. But if you ask inside, what is my deepest heart's desire that my genius turns on when I know it? Think of that for a moment. See if you can tune in. Deepest heart's desire. Genius code turning on in the 13.7 billion year trajectory inside you. 
Is that something to think of? That the universe is longing for you to say yes and find that out? Yes. Yes. And so, as we join genes to procreate, let's take a moment right now to feel how it is to join genius to co-create. Right now, the three of us and all of you. Let's just turn to your partner, or anybody who's right near you, and hold their hand and think of the genius that's in each of you and think of the current of the billions of years that it took to get you here. <laughs> and think of your saying yes to your genius. Woo! Wow. Wow. And the yes when Mark, who will be coming in in just a moment, and I came up with a name for us, which I said in the beginning, let's restate that name as we're joining genius in Homo Amore Universalis. Homo Amore Universalis. Do you think that the entire universe would have stopped with Homo sapiens sapiens in separate consciousness? Do you think it would have said, well, we did the job, that's it? Well, no, <laughs> because we have discovered, all of us, each in our own way, that the universe is bringing forth greater love greater desire for freedom, greater joining of genius, greater enormous technological capabilities of the ancient gods for us to say yes to the internal genius within us as homo amore universalis for the very first time at Sunrise Ranch. <laughs> it's an inauguration. It's <laughs> it's an inauguration at Arise. And with that, I would like to welcome my friend, my partner, Mark Gaffney, and see if he actually comes in from Holland. Welcome, Mark. Let's see what happens now. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Yay. Beloved Barbara, oh my God, welcome Homo Amore Universalis. Oh my God. Yes. And I am evolution. And the great news is, beloved Barbara, as we say, I am evolution is not a metaphor. It's not a fanciful poetic image. It's actually the prose of reality. The realization that reality is not a fact, but a story. And it's not an ordinary story. It's a love story. And it's not an ordinary love story. It's an evolutionary love story. It's an outrageous love story. And to access that quality of evolutionary love, of outrageous love, is so desperately needed at this moment in time. Friends, as you know, we live in a world of outrageous pain. And the only response to outrageous pain is outrageous love. But outrageous love is not... Yay! Yay! Outrageous lovers in the dome in Sunrise Ranch. Outrageous love is not ordinary love. We love ordinary love, but ordinary love is a strategy of the ego. How do I get a little status, a little comfort, a little security, which are all great, but outrageous love? Outrageous love is what Tagore said, right? It's the heart of existence itself. Tagore said outrageous love is not a mere human sentiment. It's the heart of existence. 
Dante said it's the love that moves the sun and other stars. Outrageous love is what drives all of reality. You got two quarks hanging out at the moment of the Big Bang. What draws them to each other? Why are they attracted to each other? All of electromagnetic attraction. Quarks are attracted to quarks. They come together to form protons, electrons, and neutrons. They're attracted to each other. They long for each other. And then atoms are formed. And then atoms long and yearn and are attracted by evolutionary love to other atoms. Actually, at the heart of all matter, literally matter itself, is outrageous love. Attraction, allurement, evolutionary love. Love is not a fanciful idea. It's not a human creation. It's outrageous love. It's allurement all the way up and all the way down. It's actually the nature of reality itself. You ever heard of gravity, my friends, in Sunrise Ranch? Beloved Barbara and I talk about this all the time. What is gravity? Gravity is allurement. That's what it is. It's outrageous love. There's nothing underneath gravity. Gravity is but the exterior expression of that quality of outrageous love. So let's hear this again. Let's try and grab this for a second. We live in a world of outrageous pain. We all know that. 17,000 children every single day die of hunger or hunger-related diseases in a world that has enough food to feed every child four times over. What does that mean? That's outrageous pain. The only response to outrageous pain is outrageous love. So what does that mean? It means that who we are in our essence is we're outrageous lovers, not as a metaphor. We are reality awakening to its true nature. We are driven just as quarks are by allurement, by the desire to love and be loved. We are in our essence, in our core, evolutionary lovers. We're outrageous lovers. More precisely, we are unique configurations of outrageous love. Each one of us is a unique configuration of intimacy. Now you think that's like a made up clever idea, a little poetry. Well, here's the great, wild, gorgeous thing. It's not. Take a protein molecule, for example. You ever hung out with a protein molecule? Quite a few of them hanging out inside of us. What's a protein molecule? It's actually a unique configuration of intimacy. It's how the amino acids get together and how they exchange and what their intimate arrangement is. Actually, all of reality is evolution, and all of evolution is the evolution of intimacy, and that is the best science we have today. That's shocking. That's new information. We realize love is not a mere human people sense. People clap for a moment. Mark, let people just say, let, clap, or anything. Clap. People are appreciating you. Well, let's clap. What a great idea. Oh, my God. She doesn't hear me. Mark, we are, we're appreciating you every now and then, so you can just pause for a little appreciation. Thank you. Well, sweetheart, it's hard to know when to pause, if you know what I mean, but I appreciate the thought. Totally. Yes. So, so let's, let's bring this together. The reality is not a fact. It's a story. It's not an ordinary story. It's a love story. It's not an ordinary love story. It's an outrageous love story. Reality is allurement all the way up and all the way down, and that's not a fanciful conjecture, but it's the best result of all the interior and exterior sciences woven together. It's the best understanding we have of reality today. Now, what does that mean about me? What does that mean about you? Now, Barbara, is this a good time to go on, or am I supposed to be pausing for an appreciation break? I'm just checking in. Yay. Bam. Bam. Here we go. And it gets really wild and really beautiful now. And let's kind of really grab this because it's gorgeous because it's about identity. You see, friends, in the postmodern world, postmodernity told us that there are no great stories anymore. The only grand narrative of postmodernity is there are no grand narratives. But it's actually not true. You see, after all the deconstruction, we have to actually start the great reconstructive project. We live in a world Barbara, as you said, which is posed between dystopia and utopia. Our friend Yuval Harari just wrote a book called Homo Deus, but it was actually about a dystopian vision similar to the Hunger Games, where the very wealthy elite biohack their way to some form of immortality, but the rest of the world is left behind. 
In our response to that vision, our good friend Yuval and many other techno optimists vision of homo deus, right? The elite that find their immortality while so many are left behind and tragedy actually sweeps the rest of the planet as the gap between have and have nots widens and the infrastructure breaks down, right? And the entire structure of governance breaks down, right? And climate change sweeps and existential threats, right? Actually multiply and multiply. And then a few elite biohack their way to immortality. No, 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 no. Actually something else is waking up and that is homo amore universalis. The realization that we're all out. Pause, pause Mark, for a minute. Yes, pause, pause. <laughs> we're pausing, we're pausing. <laughs> Barbara, we should do this often. You tell me when to pause. Can I, are, we, are we good? I will. Yeah, we did because we liked the way you brought in homo amore universalis yes. just then. Yeah, that was really awesome. good. <laughs> okay. I think this is a new way to give a talk. Okay, well, we, could, we should take this on the road. Okay. <laughs> Let's feel this together, beloved B, right? It's kind of awesome. Who am I? I'm an outrageous lover. Well, what do outrageous lovers do? Well, first, they keep every boundary that should be kept. They honor full mutuality and full delight. But outrageous lovers aren't about sexuality. They're about outrageous love in every dimension of life. Outrageous lovers commit outrageous acts of love. That's what they do. And what's an outrageous cheering. act of love? A little bit of cheering here. A little bit of cheering. <laughs> and what, and I'm going to finish with this, Barbara, because I think this is the most important. What outrageous acts of love do outrageous lovers commit? Those that are a function of their unique self. And friends, I want to go with you so gently and so tenderly, but so audaciously for the sake of the evolution of love two more vital steps. Who am I? Who are you? When we say I am evolution, evolution is not a theory out there. Evolution actually awakens in me, as me and through me. When we say I am homo amore universalis, what do we actually mean? We actually mean that for the first time today, based on the best interior sciences and exterior sciences, we have the best answer available in history to the question of who are you? Who are you? Who am I? Who are we? You are an irreducibly unique expression of the love intelligence and love beauty. That is the initiating and animating energy and eros of all that is, that lives in you, as you and through you, that never was, is or will be ever again, other than through you. And as such, you have an irreducibly unique perspective and an irreducibly unique quality of intimacy that come together to foster your unique gift that is needed by all that is, that you can give in your unique circle of intimacy and influence. And as such, you have the capacity and I have the capacity and we have the capacity, but each of us individually and uniquely to stand on the abyss of darkness and say gorgeously, singularly, let there be light. And as such, the irreducible- Mark, Mark pause, of pa no, one pause. More Woo, no, Mark. No, Barbara, one more second. One more second, love. We need one more sentence, love, and then we're gonna pause. Okay. Here we go. Here we go, this is the big one, beloved B, and then we gotta pause. Is that okay? We good? Yeah, okay, good. here we go. And as such, if I don't awaken to the reality that I am homo amor universalis, that I am unique self, that I'm a unique configuration of intimacy needed by all of reality, there remains a corner of the world that's unloved because I was asleep. Reality needs my service. Oh my God, that's such a shocking idea. Reality isn't outside of me. Homo amore universalis is the universal love story, the cosmoerotic universe in person is homo amore universalis. Now imagine beloved B, beloved Barbara, awesome, most awesome one. Imagine as you and I have talked in so many late night conversations, if every human being woke up and said, I am unique self, I am homo amore universalis. 
and reality needs my service, everything would change. The self-organizing universe would awaken in unique self-symphony. Oh my God, yay. Let's give a big hand if you're up for it for that. I think we could have, could we have some music for Unique Self Symphony? Mark, we're yes. going to do just a yes. little music for Unique Self Symphony. just conclude with a couple of questions around Homo Amore Universalis. Do you feel a, a deeper spirituality than ever before in some way? Do you feel that impulse rising you in some way? Let me have a just, yes, is there a deeper spirituality? Anybody want to say a word, what it feels like? What does this deeper spirituality feel like? That's it. <laughs> um, do you feel a, I would say, expanded yearning to create, express, and fulfill your unique genius? Yes! Wow! Does anybody want to just say what that feels like when you want to expand your unique genius and your unique creativity? Who wants to speak up? Yes. Just stand up and just shout it out. <laughs> That's exactly the unique self symphony. Thank you. Anybody else like to just say that unique expression that is yours and yours alone? It feel oh wow, it feels music for that one. But it feels like a fire burning in water. <laughs> 
gorgeous image. That's fantastic. It feels like what? It feels also like a humble listening. That's really beautiful. While it's, it's a tremendous thrust, it's a humble listening. So we, we have expanded deepening spirituality. We have expanded vocations. And are we aware of the innovations in health, in education, in economics, in relationships? Are we aware of the genius in the wheel of co-creation of human endeavor? What does it feel like if that was to be connected? Instead of connecting what's breaking down, if we were connecting what's breaking through, what would that do? Mark Donahue, what will happen? We would create a world that would fully meet our potential. Anybody else, what would happen if we connected? Yes. Sinner, who said that? That's my favorite thing. Sinner. <laughs> Almost nobody ever says synergy. That gives me a, a, a chance to say, I say synergistic democracy, which would be people joining together to create unless rather than win lose voting can you imagine here here's a call for synergistic democracy innovations in every field if they were just joined synergistically which means that each helps the other to be more of who it is rather than just even just cooperating we would have a culture that can heal the earth, free the people, and begin to explore the universe. Do you think we're alone in the, in the universe? You don't. Neither do I. Could it possibly be that we have to get together in resonance before we would ever know? Could it be that we can't get direct contact en masse unless we resonate together? Music for the shared contact. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. This is, this is all true. We're not making this up. Wow. This is my. I, I love the music to be doing this with us because music gives us the feel of it. Thank you, thank you, God. It brings tears to my eyes to think of it. It's so immense. And one last thought here. This is the high-tech genius of humanity. Nanotech, biotech, quantum computing, robotics, space travel, powers of ancient gods to us, given by the people like at Singularity University who are gathering together this genius. Now, what are we going to do with this? As Mark says, if it's misused, we get homo deus. We get a few people who biohack their way to immortality. But we're talking about life extension. We're talking about the, the intelligence that we have never had before, a singularity, a shift. We're talking about the ability that we, we never have to do r rote routine work. We can only do the unique work that we're all meant to do. Let's take a moment to envision using it all for the good. Let's take a moment to see maybe that's one of our intentions, is not to just separate from the higher technologies, but love them into service for the future of Homo Amore Universalis. Do we think that's true? Now, we're going to conclude with something that we've never heard before, which is special music 
called The Planetary Smile, Awakening in Us. <laughs> Gaffney and Holland. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you Mark. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Tiara. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Didn't it? <laughs> that is so great, Mark. Well, it's awesome. really beautiful. Rock stars. <laughs>